Hello again and welcome to another episode of the Ominous Origins Podcast with me, Casey. Of course, this episode is still brought to you by the wonderful people over at MorbidlyBeautiful.com. Morbidly Beautiful is your one-stop shop for all things horror content related from interviews, reviews, top ten lists, and of course, everything in between. So I got two new things going on for this episode. A, well I guess three. A, I'm back, because I took a few weeks off. Secondly, I'm bird-sitting for a friend who's in Ecuador at the moment, so you may hear some little chirps and chaps and bangs and stuff throughout the episode. Not much I can do about it. Not much I can do about it. I got a dog, so I can't leave the bird around the dog because I don't want to scare the bird to death. So he's just chilling behind me right now. You may hear him chime in once in a while. And lastly, in terms of newness, I decided to try something for the script this week. As opposed to writing it myself or just compiling a bunch of information and kind of winging it, which I do sometimes, I had chat GPT write me a script. Yeah, that funny little thing. So let's see how that works. I just put in, write me a podcast script about today's topic, which I'll get to in a second. So it's very interesting. I'm very curious. I haven't read it yet. This is going in completely blind. So let me know later on if you think this was a good idea or not. There's Jack the bird dropping grapes into his cage. You probably heard that. Anyway, today's episode is going to be about the Somerton Man. It's one I've been putting off for so long simply because, well, it's been done to death. Every true crime podcast in the world has covered the Somerton Man. Any mystery podcast, same thing. So I don't know what else I could add to it, but maybe chat GPT can do us some justice and get us some new stuff. In case you are one of the few people in the world who are unfamiliar with this, the Somerton Man is basically a dude washed up on a beach in Australia. Nobody knows how he got there. Nobody knows who he was. Nobody knows who he is still, as far as I know. So let's just jump right into it. This is the Somerton Man mystery. Ominous. Ominous. It is an adjective. Sounds like someone breathing. Ominous. Now, the Somerton Man mystery, also known as the Taman Shud case, refers to an unidentified man found on Somerton Beach in Adelaide, Australia, on December 1st, 1948. He was indeed dead. The case remains unsolved to this day, but many theories have been proposed over the years, but no conclusive evidence has been found. So let's dive into the mystery of the Somerton Man and try to piece together just what happened. The story actually begins on November 30th, 1948, when a man was seen lying on the beach near the crippled children's home in Somerton. He was dressed in a suit, but no identification was found on him. The police were called, and an examination revealed that the man was indeed dead. The cause of death was determined to be poisoning, specifically from a rare and deadly poison called digitalis. A small piece of paper with the words Tom and Shud was also found in a hidden pocket sewn into the man's trousers. The phrase means ended or finished in Persian, and it was identified as being torn from a book of Persian poetry called the Rubiata of Omar Khayyam. Investigators later found a copy of the book in a car parked near the beach with the code written in the back of the book that has never been deciphered. The book was traced to a local nurse named Jessica Thompson, who claimed to have given it to a man named Alfred Boxall in 1945. However, when Boxall was found alive and well, with his copy of the book still in his possession, the case took a mysterious turn, if it hadn't already taken a few. Many theories have been proposed over the years to explain the identity of the Somerton man and the circumstances of his death. Some believe that he was a spy or a secret agent, possibly with connections to the Cold War. Others have suggested that he was a victim of a failed romance and the book was code used to communicate with his lover. Another theory suggests that the Somerton Man may have been involved in a black market operation involving Digitalis, which was used as a heart medication at the time. However, no definitive evidence has ever been found to support any of these theories. Just like any good theory, really. One of the most intriguing aspects of the case is the possibility that the Somerton Man was the victim of a targeted assassination, which would play back into the spy or secret agent angle. This theory is based on the unusual circumstances surrounding his death, 
as well as the fact that he appeared to have no identification or personal belongings on him. In recent years, advances in forensic sciences and DNA testing have offered new hope for solving the Somerton Man mystery. In 2018, a team of researchers announced that they have identified a potential living relative of the Somerton Man through DNA testing. These researchers were able to extract DNA from a bloodstained scrap of clothing near the body and compared it to a database of DNA samples from around the world. They found a match with a living relative in the United States, although the identity of the relative was not disclosed. Despite this breakthrough, many questions remain unanswered in the Somerton Man case. The true identity of the man and the circumstances of his death may never be known. However, the mystery continues to captivate the public imagination and inspire countless theories and speculation. Now, sadly, that's all that the Chad DGB gave me. I know, it was, what, six minutes? Five minutes tops? Uh, that might be a limitation of the free version. So let's take a little pause and try again with a different AI script maker thingy. Maybe it'll give us some more information. Maybe it knows something the rest of the world doesn't. We'll be right back. So there is some luck. There is another AI chat out there from Deep AI that gave me a little bit more information and worded it beautifully as you would expect a robot to do. Now here it says, in the 1960s, a woman came forward with a clue to the identity of the Somerton Man. She claimed to have had an affair with him, and she believed his name was Justin, J-E-S-T-Y-N, which is a very, like, millennial name, so I'm not sure how legit that is, but anyway, and that he worked for the government. The woman, named Jessica Thompson, who we discussed earlier, also claimed that she had given the Somerton Man a copy of a book of poetry that was found in his possession. But we do know now that that was not the case. Furthermore, though, Jessica Thompson claimed to have a more intriguing aspect of the case, but the evidence was still circumstantial. After many years of research, investigators found that Jessica's son, Robin, had an unusual ear. The Somerton man also had an unusual ear. Coincidence? Maybe. They conducted DNA testing and it was revealed that Robin Thompson was related to the Somerton Man, but they couldn't establish an exact connection between the two. Now the case here it ends with this, the case of the Somerton Man remains one of Australia's greatest unsolved mysteries despite decades of research and investigation. The true identity of Tom and Should may never be revealed. The case continues to fascinate people worldwide and new theories and clues continue to emerge. This case proves that even after 70 years, some mysteries remain unsolved. I also want to point out here that they think this podcast is called Mystery Files, which is a pretty good name for a podcast, I'm not going to lie. It's no ominous origins, but Mystery Files is pretty good. It also tells me here to remind you to subscribe to the podcast and leave any reviews, which is smart too. So what did you think? Chat? GTP or GPT or whatever the fuck it's called, this AI chat. I mean, to be fair, it did give me relevant information. It did give me a lot of pretty good content, even if it wasn't that much, really. I mean, I've seen other episodes of podcasts go hours or even multiple parts, multiple hours over multiple parts of this Summer 10 Man case. So what did you think? What do you think of chat GTP, GPT, whatever the fuck it's called, AI chat? What do you think of AI chat as a whole? Is it going to replace us as human beings and just run the world while we sit around and get fat like in WALL-E? Or is it going to turn into Terminator? Where if you give it a little bit too much information and a little bit too much freedom with its thinking, is it just going to come around and be like, well, the only way to solve all the world's problems is to destroy humanity. Mankind needs to go. It's a terrifying thought. So this episode is going to be super short because this is an experiment. Maybe I'll experiment with it a little bit more on different topics. I don't know 100% yet. I feel like there is some, just a little bit of work to be done for podcast scripts. But it even gives me like music transitions and insert music here and put your intro here and do all that sort of shit. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Useful tool. Sure, but I'm sorry for the short episode after taking a few weeks off. As you know, my life is fucking great. 
nobody in my life is sick or dying or anything like that. I'm in perfect health, mentally and physically, so, you know, there's just no excuses. That's all lies. That's all lies. Anywho, I'm going to try to be a little more consistent in the future. I know I say that a lot, but hey, here we are today with the Summerton Man. A nice little summary, if you will. And I'm just trying to stretch it out at this point. I just want to get a little bit more time out of this. But my name is Casey, and if you did like what you heard, please feel free to leave a review on Apple iTunes or podcast or whatever the fuck it's called. Also, don't be afraid to hit the little five-star button on Spotify. That's great nowadays. All you need to do is listen to 30 seconds of an episode on the Spotify app on your mobile device and then hit that five-star button. It helps me out, makes me feel great and fuzzy, and I think it helps with analytics and discoverability and all that kind of stuff. So that's all I got for you. Until next time.